What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Andrew Marlowe Artist. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram at Andrew Marlowe Artist. Please like this video and subscribe for more awesome art videos. So today, I just wanted to make a quick, brief video talking about the benefits um, and perhaps some of the disadvantages of layering techniques in oil painting versus all-in-one go a la prima style. There's a lot of different names that you could, you know, use for different oil painting techniques. You know, you could call it the layering, glazing, uh, slow, you know, laborious oil painting style, or you could call it the a la prima, all in one go, wet on wet, wet into wet, oil painting style. It doesn't really matter what you call it, um, but it's really important, super important actually, to be aware of the differences of the different styles of oil paintings. In terms of my experience with oil painting, I don't want to say that one is better than the other, but I will say that it's hard to to work quickly. I mean, it's easy to work quickly, but it's also hard because you can only do so much by trying to slap an oil painting together within the course of an hour or two hours or even one day. In, in all reality, it takes days, if not weeks, if not months, if not years, to really make super advanced oil paintings, but that doesn't mean that you can't make really awesome art productions, really fantastic, amazing technical oil paintings by painting quickly also. We have several examples of that, you know, famous people like Joaquin Sorolia or Franz Halls or John Singer Sargent, Andrew Zorn, but I also think uh, even somebody like Rembrandt or Titian, but I do think that whole idea that's what's been sort of propagated you know, in the art community that these great masters, you know, painted these huge amazing portraits in an you know in a day or even an hour or two i i don't think that's necessarily always the case i think those painters that they say painted wet on wet or a la prima or painted you know these amazing masterpieces in, in the course of a day or two yes maybe some of them did that sometimes but i do think that it's more about how the technique looks that makes it look like they painted it that way or that makes it look like they painted it that fast but I do think that there's a lot more work that went into those those great masters paintings um, and, and their style and technique. And it's all about sort of fooling people's perceptions. Like, because if you can paint really quickly, or I mean, not paint quickly, but paint in a way that looks like it was painted really quickly, um, very spontaneous, very brushy, it's going to look like it was painted in like five minutes or something. And yes, there are a lot of artists um, that that can paint really quickly, and you you can you can convey a lot by painting quickly. So it's actually a really good thing to practice. Um, you know, like to, whatever your style is, maybe you're an a la prima painter, which is really awesome, or maybe you're more like a layering technique style painter, more like an academic style painter. I mean, both ways, both styles of painting, whether it's a la prima or the layering technique can, can both be academic in, in nature. When we talk about academic painting, we usually think of glazing, we usually think of scumbling, we usually think of you know these master artists, um, master technicians of their craft spending weeks and months on their paintings, but that's all, not always the case. I mean, think about somebody like Ben Lustenhauer, you know, he's a great YouTuber that paints these amazing a la prima portraits, but he, does, he doesn't really slap them together in an hour. You know, it does take a lot of time, you know, sometimes three and four hours to really get a likeness. You know, there's a lot of artists out there that can paint amazing portraits really fast. Um, and it's super important to learn how to do that because if you're in, you know, in your, if you're in like a live drawing or a painting session, or maybe you're in like an atelier situation, or maybe you just invited your friend or your girlfriend over for, for coffee and you're like, hey, last minute, let's, can I do a portrait of you for like a half an hour or an hour? It's super amazing. You know, it, it's, it, you get such a rush from being able to paint quickly. Um, and it takes a lot of skill to do that because it's, it's pretty much the complete opposite of taking a large amount of time to get your paintings to look really good. Um, but I will say that before I interrupted myself, going back to the beginning of what I was saying in the beginning of the video, you can only do so much by trying to slap a painting together in, in a real short period of time. I think you can do more if you take your time. I'm not saying that you have to be like Leonardo da Vinci and spend, you know, 
10 years on one painting or something like that but you can take you know at least a, a two or three days to really get things you know to, to look good it can still be an alla prima style you can still work into wet paint or you can do um, you know you can paint quickly but you can use like fast drying mediums like a liquid or like a fast drying alkyd walnut oil or something like that to to speed up the drying but you're still painting in in, in a layered way but it's you're painting quicker because the paint is drying faster it's not a good mindset to try to say that one style is better than the other but i think you can do more you can perfect things if you take your time i'm um, sure paint a la prima portraits Till the cows come home paint as quick as you can try to get likenesses as quick as you can you know do gesture drawings do really fast you know, spontaneous stuff but at the same time don't just get locked into one style where you're painting a la prima portraits but you're not painting layered portraits too because you it's all kind of related and you can learn about one technique by doing another technique even if they're completely different let's take the artist vincent van gogh for for a quick example a lot of his paintings look like they were done extremely quickly yes a lot of them were done extremely quickly but on the other hand he didn't most of those really really good paintings took a lot of planning you know he wasn't necessarily just sitting outside and just slapping the starry night together in like two hours he probably worked on it for three or four hours one night you know then he would come back to it the next day work on it a little bit more and then come back to it maybe another day or two and and finish it or maybe sometimes he was out in the field and he would maybe just do just nail a painting in like an hour or two or four hours or maybe he was out there all day long planning the painting and sort of revising it so it's it's dangerous to sort of um it's dangerous to to the artistic endeavor so to speak if you have the mindset of every time you sit down you're going to try to make this super fast super spontaneous painting because you're going to start getting overconfident you're going to start painting sloppy um you're going to you know you know you're not going to be able to see the whole picture i mean yes you should do drills you should do practice sketches you should do practice sketches with oils you know maybe set a timer a half an hour how good can i make this painting look in a half an hour how good can i make this painting look in an hour how good can i make this painting look in three hours but don't like sit down with the mindset of like you want to be the next you know john singer sergeant i see a lot of people or, or a lot of aspiring artists really really want to paint like that um and that's cool everybody wants to paint like john singer sergeant but you know you're you're not john singer sergeant you know john singer sergeant did his thing you know and you should really learn to do your own thing also i mean it's cool to be able to paint fast it's cool to be able to you know to, to make your paintings look really brushy and really spontaneous but don't get too that that sort of leads me down another rabbit hole of not getting too wrapped up in the old masters um i see a lot of people they're just they live by the old techniques of the old masters and and you know but to me as an artist it's really really about what's going on in the here and the now yes i love the old masters um but it's important to, to learn from the masters that we have nowadays too you know we're not living in the days of caravaggio we're not living in the days of leonardo da vinci we're not living in the days of john singer Sargent. we're not living in the days of picasso yes we should take as much valuable art information and valuable art aesthetics from those amazing masters that we can um, but study the artists that are on YouTube. Study the artists that are on Instagram. Don't get too wrapped up into the old masters. But anyway, that's a topic for another video. Let's get back to the original concept of this video, which was the benefits of, of a la prima versus the layering technique. Like I said, I'm, I'm beating this like a dead horse, but you can only do so much with a la prima. Um, the paint is going to mix. Sometimes your colors get really muddy. You can only put so much detail within a painting um, if the paint is wet. You know, it, to really do really advanced detail or to really do really advanced shading techniques or really advanced um, perspective perhaps or skin tones, it really does take a layering technique. Um, but don't get too wrapped up in the layering technique because then you'll never be finishing your paintings. I think we've all been there as artists. You know, we've just been working on the same canvas for, for weeks and weeks and months, sometimes years. Um, and, and that's amazing. I mean, if you have that kind of patience to be somebody like, I can't think of his name right now. Um, he's like a contemporary artist, not contemporary. He's like a, yeah, he is contemporary, but he's like a, a figurative artist. What is his name? I cannot think of his name. 
John Curran, you idiot. How could you possibly forget that? You're supposed to be an art historian. Shame on you. Wait, the, you don't want to, and he only produces like three or four paintings a year, which is really cool. That's really admirable. But what is he doing the rest of the time? Hopefully he's not just spending all those years on like a couple paintings and he's hopefully he's drawing and doing other ala prima studies um you know on the side or something but who knows some artists really like to work like that they like to just totally immerse themselves within one painting for like months and months and months and years sometimes i don't i've never really done that i mean i have done that but i've always worked on other things on the side i'm um, like this painting that i'm working on behind me actually is a very large canvas this is only the top of it well it's not very large but it's relatively large for the stuff that i've worked on um and it's real easy especially with a large canvas it's real easy to get you know real trapped in the details and, and start spending way too much time that i think is necessary um which kind of contradicts my original statement about um you know you can only do so much within a quick period of time with oil painting but what I mean by that is don't, you know, get, don't, don't cripple yourself by getting, getting bogged down into one style and not experimenting with another. You know, you should try to paint fast portraits, but you should also uh, work on other portraits that you spend months and, and, and weeks, weeks and months on. Because it's real important to sort of open up the dialogue between the different styles of, of painting. You can get a lot of really amazing effects um, that aren't layered, that aren't, you know detailed that aren't you know glazed or anything like that they aren't layered by doing a la prima wet wet on wet or wet into wet portrait painting or you know any kind of oil painting you can get some amazing effects like that 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 are not only loose and spontaneous but they sometimes they look more realistic than the artists that spent years on their paintings so it really just depends on how you use your technique it really all depends on you know how your technique how strong your technique is um, in conjunction with with whatever style you're trying to do before this video gets too ramble I just wanted to sort of talk a little bit about the different styles what are the I, I don't know if I really got further you know um, enough deeply into the advantages or the disadvantages of the different two different painting styles but even within those two pa different painting styles that being wet on wet a la prima versus the layer technique the more classical technique I guess you could say um, you know there's other styles within that and sometimes those two styles even blend within themselves to form some type of a weird hybrid style of painting um, so there's really no right or wrong way it's just like depending on your artistic temperament depending on you know how um, how crazy you are up in the head as far as your artist you know are you a more like um, concentrated like real sort of anal retentive type of artist are you more of like a spontaneous you know impressionistic type of artist you really have to understand like what it is you're trying to do as an artist you know don't just try to do something because you saw a youtuber do it or don't just try to do something because that's your favorite artist yes we all try to emulate our favorite artists uh, but at the same time you have to go beyond what they did thank you so much for watching guys and we'll see you guys in the next video